Today I want to take a quick look at the recent release of Zero G. Zero G is Zero Linux with the GNOME desktop environment. You guys know I'm a big fan of Zero Linux. Uh, Steve, the creator of Zero Linux, often appears on the channel. He's often a part of the patrons live stream that I do at the end of every month. And you know, his distribution, Zero Linux, his main edition, of course, is KDE Plasma, but he also maintains this GNOME edition that I think does deserve a little love so I'm going to highlight it today on camera. Now for those of you that want to try out Zero G or the KDE Plasma edition of Zero Linux, you know, anything that Zero Linux is doing, of course, go to the Zero Linux website, zerolinux.xyz. If you want to check out this GNOME edition, go to unlock access and you know, just purchase the ISO from Kofi here is what he's using. So he is charging for the ISOs that he builds, which makes sense. Everyone should charge money for your time, especially, you know, building ISOs, maintaining a distribution is a lot of work. Now, of course, all the software is free and open source software. I'm sure he's got all of his scripts and, you know, his repositories for his build of the Arch ISO and everything. If you want to go build Zero Linux yourself, you're certainly more than capable of creating your own ISO of it, but if you want an already pre-built ISO of Zero Linux, then please go uh, donate a little money to Steve on Kofi. So I've already got the ISO. I'm going to take a quick look at it, a quick first look of Zero G inside a virtual machine. I've already installed Zero Linux inside the virtual machine. It's your standard Calamaris installer. It's the standard Zero Linux version of the Calamaris installer, which is got some Zero Linux branding, but it's essentially your standard Calamaris installer. You click OK two or three times, you know, and you're done in about 10 minutes or so. After I ran through the installation, I also rebooted the machine and then I ran a quick update. Zero Linux makes it very easy to update the system. And it's very important you update the system on first reboot because it is Arch Linux based. So you're probably gonna have a lot of updates waiting on you. But in the sys tray, in the top panel, there is a little widget that tells you, hey, you have updates. It'll give you the number of the updates available. You click on the little SysTray widget and it opens a terminal and it runs a sudo pacman syu. All you have to do, enter your sudo password and your system starts updating. For me, I had about 330 updates waiting for me and that did take a little time. But again, it's important that you take that update right after you install. So this is zero G out of the box. And I've got to say, you know, I love the theming. Of course, you, you guys know I'm a sucker for wallpapers and I do really love the artwork here on the wallpaper. Of course, we've got some nice uh, blues, purples, pinks, coloration, which kind of fits with the theming. You see a lot of uh, purple accents as well. Now, one thing to note with the theming is it hasn't really been themed in a serious way as far as like GTK theming. This is strictly your standard GNOME add way to theming. All they've done is they've added the settings for the highlight colors. So the, you know, the highlight color here, of course, is the purple, the shade of purple that Zero Linux does tend to use. Now let's talk about some of the settings that they've changed here in GNOME. So by default, instead of using your standard, uh, you know, full screen dashboard for GNOME, uh, they are actually just using Arc Menu, which is an extension to GNOME. And it's a really nice extension. It gives you a much more traditional kind of menu menu system. Uh, you got your uh, categories, you know, that you know you can break down all the applications that are installed by category. You can search for an application. It's your standard, you know, Windows style start menu. And I much prefer this than the traditional GNOME uh, overview or dash or whatever thing they call that. And I think uh, especially if you're trying to attract potential Windows users over to Linux, uh, having a traditional menu system, uh, I think will make them feel more at home. Of course, if you don't want to use the arc menu. Of course, you can always disable that. That's just an extension. You can disable it. There is the GNOME extensions manager down here in the bottom panel, the dock here. You see we have both GNOME tweaks installed and GNOME extensions. If I open GNOME extensions, we can actually see the extensions that are actually installed on the system. I can make this window bigger. You see there's actually 
quite a few things installed as extensions here. Now, not all of them are turned on, but you know, some of the important ones, you can say arc menu is turned on. Again, you can turn that off if you don't like it. Blur my shell is also turned on. Caffeine is also turned on. I noticed the caffeine uh, icon sitting here in the sys tray. If I go to about, you can see this is caffeine version 4.2.0. And what caffeine is, you can see in the description, it is an application to temporarily prevent the activation of both the screensaver and the sleep power saving mode. So basically to keep your computer from going to sleep. We've also got dash to dock, which of course is the dock at the bottom. Uh, GS Connect is also installed as an extension. That's for um, connecting, uh, syncing with your mobile devices. For me, I'm not going to play with any of these extensions. I'm going to keep a zero G as it is out of the box for purposes of this video. Now, one interesting thing that sometimes confuses me, and this is the same with the KDE Plasma version and the GNOME version of Zero Linux, is uh, now Steve, the creator of Zero Linux, has this uh, Zero Linux post installation uh, tool here, and you can see it is down here in the dock. But you know, a lot of times that first icon in the dock, especially when it has the distro logo, you would think that would be your start menu because the start menu obviously has the same logo, but it's up here at the top. But you know, I would think those would be the same application. So this is very confusing. I often hit this thing thinking it's the menu when it's the post installation script. And obviously you're gonna go to the menu system like a thousand times more probably than you're ever gonna open up. You know, this particular program, which is a neat program, it's just not, you know, you're probably trying to get into the menu system. So what I would suggest is you gotta change the icons so they don't, because uh, anything that has the same icon, you would think it's the same application, but that's not the case. So make those uh, icons differentiate themselves in some way. Or maybe a, another thing is to move the uh, icon from the first spot in the dock, you know, somewhere in the middle of the dock or at the end of the dock. You know, it's less likely to get confused with being a start menu if it's not in that position. But let's take a quick look at the post installation script here. And you can see in the menu system, we have several things we could do. Uh, we, we've got categories for system setup, system drivers, distro box and docker, system customization, game launchers and tweaks, recommended system packages and system troubleshooting and tweaks. Um, probably some of the most useful ones are the ones that you'd probably use most often device drivers so you can you know scan for certain drivers get certain drivers installed for whatever hardware you need uh, another really interesting one is the uh, seventh category system troubleshooting for example on arch based distros you will often run into uh, situations where you need to clear the pac-man cache or you need to unlock the pac-man database there's a lock file sometimes you got to remove that file and if you're not familiar with where the file is on the file system or if you're not familiar with how the terminal works so you don't know you know the command to delete a file the rm command right this just automates you know a lot of those common tasks you know some of those problems you run into often on an arch based system you know he's kind of streamlined all of that you know put all of those common troubleshooting kind of tasks in one tool so this is a really cool little script he's put together here let me close out that terminal window by the way the terminal we should actually talk about the terminal he is using ghosty here in zero g and of course you've got your little fetch information here uh you know, let's see what shell are we using we are using bash and i can verify that i could do an echo dollar sign zero here in the shell and it will return bash if we were on zsh it would return zsh if you're on fish echo dollar sign zero returns nothing some other things we could check let me go ahead and make the uh, terminal full screen i thought i made the terminal full screen does double clicking not make it full screen there it goes yeah that was weird the, the first terminal i had i thought i double clicked it and it it went away i don't know if it crashed or uh, what was going on let's see let's zoom the terminal in let me go ahead and clear the screen so one of the things with Zero Linux, I know he has Flatpak installed out of the box. I don't believe any Flatpaks are installed, though, out of the box. If I do a Flatpak list, yeah, nothing has been installed as a Flatpak, but the Flatpak binary is there, so you are ready to install Flatpaks out of the box if you choose to use them. Obviously, being a GNOME distribution, GNOME just defaults to Wayland nowadays, uh, but just to verify that we are in a Wayland session, I could echo 
xdg underscore session underscore type here in the terminal and you can see Wayland is returned if this was GNOME with x11 x11 would have been the output from that command let's check system resource usage while I have the terminal open let's run htop now I have opened a few different things here uh, I haven't opened much though it's essentially how it is out of the box there's a few things sitting in the sys tray but those were already there um, it looks like we're using about one gig of the six gigs of RAM I gave this VM. That's pretty normal for GNOME. It typically uses a little more than a gig of RAM usually. So actually just using right at one gig is kind of light for a lot of times when I check GNOME environments. Well, let me exit out of the terminal if I can type exit correctly. Of course, I could have just hit the close button with the mouse. Now let's take a look at the file manager here in GNOME, which is Nautilus. I did notice uh, other than the icons being really big, of course, that's a standard setting. Yeah, I probably make some of this a little smaller. Uh, but, you know, one of the things is in our right click menu, you know, we have uh, some context entries here, context menu entries. For example, I can edit this file as admin, meaning I can edit it with sudo privileges. I can open files and directories in Ghosty, which is our default terminal. We also have compare as well. So one of the things that you could do here, I noticed uh, meld is installed out of the box, which is a, uh, a diff program. So what you could do if you want to compare similar files and see where they differ, you know, I could choose, for example, the bash history file and I could hit control and also choose the bash logout file. I could right click on both of them and then click compare in the menu and it compares them side by side in the program here milled which is essentially just a GUI front end to the diff command you guys are probably familiar with how diff works in the terminal milled is a really nice uh, GUI program for doing diffs on files one other thing I noticed with opening Nautilus for the first time is it does show hidden files and directories uh, out of the box I didn't have to go change a setting or hit a key binding uh, control H by the way would toggle those hidden files and directories but uh, yeah, I don't know if that's just something that GNOME defaults to now or if, uh, Zero Linux actually changed that so it shows the hidden files and directories uh, automatically if that's turned on automatically I think most users probably want that anyway I've always found it annoying that uh, a lot of distros uh, hide those hidden directories and files now I'm not going to go through the uh, arc menu here and go through everything that is installed out of the box you know and there's not a ton of software here i mean it's got a nice suite of software but it's definitely not a bloated distribution and one thing i should mention though if you don't want to use the arc menu if you want to use your traditional gnome menu uh, super a i believe gets you back into the uh, dashboard thingy of gnome if you'd prefer uh, doing uh, your file searching or your program searching through that menu rather than the traditional arc menu but some of the things that are installed that are rather important i know people want to know about the default web browser. That's the program most of us spend most of our time in on a computer. It defaults to using Firefox as the browser. If I go to help and about Firefox, this is Firefox version 135.0.1. That's probably not the version it shipped with on the ISO because remember, it's an Arch-based distribution, rolling release. I did take an update before actually turning on the camera and recording this video. Some other important programs, at least for me, text editors. Let's see what text editors are installed. Looks like they're using gedit as a graphical text editor and vim as a, a terminal text editor. And that's fine. Uh, I think both of those are smart choices. Makes sense to use gedit if you're basing uh, everything on the GNOME desktop environment. Gedit's one of the default GNOME applications. You can see this is gedit 48.1. Some other things you have available for you include under the accessories I did notice we had flat seal so uh, this is an important utility for those of you using flat packs so this is flat seal 2.3.0 and it's how you manage uh, permissions with your flat packs there's nothing to show here because there's no flat packs installed out of the box on zero Linux also under accessories Ventoy is here out of the box that is so you can burn ISOs to a USB stick under internet I noticed they're using Geary as the uh, desktop email client so for those of you that still use desktop email, Geary is installed. And I think that is a nice choice. Really, uh, 
quite nice uh, GTK based email client. Uh, of course, I'm not going to connect uh, any of my accounts or anything with Geary, so I'm just going to close that out. Under sound and video, let's see what kind of media players we are dealing with. So we have Cheese for our webcam program. Looks like we have uh, MPV for our uh, video player. We have Music. I'm assuming that's GNOME Music. <laughs> Generic names with the GNOME programs about music. Uh, yeah, GNOME Music 47. Dot one. one last thing I want to look at, as always, are the wallpapers. Let's change background. I really like the default wallpaper. Personally, probably wouldn't change it. But let's go ahead and see what kind of wallpapers we have in this wallpaper pack. I did notice it's actually a very extensive wallpaper pack. I don't know how many of these are like default GNOME wallpapers, how many of them are uh, part of zero linux probably many of them are zero linux specific wallpapers because it kind of fits with the theming lots of purples and pinks uh, some of these wallpapers i have seen before yeah i believe i remember that one uh, in an earlier uh, zero linux video i did yeah some of these you know i really like abstract art wallpapers especially and yeah, some of this stuff is really good and that is a gorgeous wallpaper right there yeah for me yeah, I think I probably would just go with the, the default wallpaper. And I say that, you know, that one there is actually not bad. That is a sharp looking wallpaper. I think that's the one I'm going to go with. So there you have it. A very quick and cursory look at the latest ISO of 0G. That's Zero Linux with GNOME. And I, I got to say, it looks fantastic. Now, before I go... I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Matt, Steve, Armor, Dragon, Cap, Caveman, Darloff, Dayless, George, Lee, Methos, Erion, Paul, Peace, Arch, Vador, Realities for Less, Red, Prophet, Roland, War, Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at Zero G would not have been possible. The show's also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys. If you want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software in general, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.